Hi everyone. Today's topic is physiology of hearing. Let us discuss it under the following headings. Introduction to sound waves, conduction of sound waves, transduction of sound waves, and the neural processing of the auditory information. What is sound? Sound is a form of energy which is produced by a vibrating object. Sound waves, it consists of alternating phases of condensation and refraction of molecules of different mediums in which it traps. Here you can see the alternate, alternating phases of condensation here increases increase in pressure and here you can see there is a decrease in pressure this is the sound wave so the speed of the sound waves is different in air and different in water physical properties of the sound frequency is the number of cycles the sound wave completes in a given period of time. The unit of frequency is hertz. Amplitude, it is the strength which it determines its loudness. The intensity of sound is measured in terms of maximum pressure change at the tympanic membrane which is more commonly expressed in decibel. So the intensity is measured in decibels. Psychological sensations of sound. Loudness is the way we sense the amplitude. It is measured in decibels. So this is the louder sound and this is the softer sound. So it is the way we sense the amplitude of the sound. Which is the way we sense the frequency. So this is low frequency. So this is high frequency. So this is low pitch and high pitch. It is measured in hertz. Timber. So it is the way we sense the complex mix of the tone. So it is the complexity by which we make the sound. So it is the timber. How sensitive the ear is to the sound? Do we know that? So the human ear is sensitive to sound over a wide range of frequencies that is 20 to 20,000 hertz. And so the amplitudes is 0 0.0002 to 209 per square centimeter. So human ear can detect the difference between the two sounds occurring between the interval of 10 microseconds. Sound intensities are measured on a ratio scale using a subjective intensity that is the threshold let us discuss the intensity of some common sounds whisper around 30 decibels normal conversation 60 decibels rock music around 90 decibels so discomfort of the ear is produced and the sound is around 120 decibels Pain in the ear is produced by the sound when it is around 130 decibels. Pitch of sound. Pitch is a subjective sensation produced by the frequency of sound. Higher the frequency, greater is the pitch. Pitch discrimination is best in the range between 1000 
to 3000 pets. Average individuals can distinguish around 2000 pitches. The pitch of the average male voice in the conversation is about 120 hertz. The average female voice has a pitch of about 250 hertz. The conduction of the sound waves. Let us see the role of the external ear. The sound waves are collected by the pinna and then it is focused into the external auditory can. The vibration that passes through the external auditory meatus and it strikes the tympanic membrane. External ear functions. It collects the sound waves and conducts it to the tympanic membrane. It helps in the amplification of the sound waves of frequency between 2000 to 4000 hertz, providing cues about the vertical localization of the sound waves. So it also prevents the mechanical injury to the tympanic membrane and also helps in maintaining the favorable temperature and humidity for the normal functioning of the tympanic membrane. Conduction of sound waves from the tympanic membrane to the ear ossicles. The sound waves that passes through the pinna and the external auditory meatus that strikes the tympanic membrane. The presence of air at the, at the atmospheric pressure on both sides of the membrane enable it to vibrate. So the vibrating tympanic membrane causes the ear ossicles to vibrate. So this tympanic membrane it acts as a pressure receiver. It is extremely sensitive to pressure changes produced by the sound waves. It also acts as a resonator. That is, it starts vibrating with pressure changes produced by the sound waves. The vibrations of the tympanic membrane ceases immediately after the end of the sound. So it critically dampens the as the sound ends. So it is the tympanic membrane and its reaction to the sound waves. Ossicular conduction. It is the main pathway for normal hearing. Air ossicles functions as a liver system, converts resonant vibration of the tympanic membrane into movements of the stapes. The motions of the tympanic membrane are imparted to the manubrium of the malleus. So this Malleus, they transmit the vibration of the manubrium to the incus. So it moves from tympanic membrane to malleus to the incus. So this incus, it transmits the vibration to the head of the staples. So the movements of the head of the staples swing in foot plate to and fro at the posterior edge of the oval wing. So this is how the ossicular conduction happens. Conduction of sound waves mechanically from the middle ear to the inner ear has various mechanisms which play the major role during the conduction of sound waves. 
that is the impedance matching phase differential between the oval and round window natural resonance of the external ear and middle ear and attenuation reflex let us discuss it one by one impedance matching the air filled middle ear conducts the sound waves mechanically to the fluid filled inner ear through the ossicular system that we have discussed so the effective transfer of the sound energy from the air medium to the fluid medium is difficult because most of the sound is reflected as a result of different mechanical properties of uh, two medium that is the impedance mismatching so this fact can be appreciated by the observation that when a person under a water cannot hear any sound made in the air outside this happens because 99.9 percent .9 of the sound is reflected away from the water surface because of its impedance offered by exactly a similar situation exists here in the ear so when the air filled middle ear has to conduct the sound to the fluid filled inner ear so nature has compensated by providing the impedance matching mechanism to the middle impedance matching by the air ossicles happens by three mechanisms the middle ear functions as an impedance matching device primarily by amplifying the sound pressure it is accomplished by the three mechanism let us discuss one by one the first one is the hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane it is exerted because the effective vibratory area of the tympanic membrane that is 55 millimeter square is much greater than the stapes oval window surface area which is only 3.2 millimeter square this size difference means the force produced by the sound is concentrated over a very smaller area thus amplifying the pressure exerted on the oval window so that is 17 volts the second mechanism is the liver action of the vesicles so the handle of the malleus is 1.3 times longer than the long process of the incus so this provides a mechanical leverage advantage due to which the middle ear ossicles increase the force of movement by 1.3 times the third mechanism is curved membrane effect the movements of the tympanic membrane are more at the periphery than at the center so where the malleus handle is attached so this too provides some leverage the discus three mechanism together increases the sound pressure to 22 folds in this way the impedance mismatching between the air filled middle ear and the fluid filled inner ear is mostly compensated so therefore when the tympanic membrane and the ossicles are removed the sound waves strike the oval window directly even very long sound occurred as whisper
minimum audibility curve. It is important to note that uh, amplification of sound intensity is greatest between 1000 to 3000 hertz. Sounds below 16 hertz or about 20,000 hertz are not amplified at all. So amplification is best between 1000 and 3000 hertz. So because of this, the human ear can perceive pitch of sound between 16 and 20,000 hertz. But maximum sensitivity is between 1000 to 3000. But it still it can amplify 16,000 to 20,000 hertz. This effect is the basis of the so-called minimum audibility curve. Phase differential between oval and the round window. Sound waves striking the tympanic membrane, they do not reach the oval and the round windows simultaneously. There is a preferential pathway to the oval window because of the ossicular chain. Thus, when the oval window is receiving wave of condensation or compression, the round window is at the phase of receiving the rarefaction. So, the sound waves were to strike both the oval and the round window simultaneously, they would cancel each other's effect with no movement of the perilim and there will not be any hearing. There will not be any hearing. So this separation of windows is achieved by the presence of intact tympanic membrane and a cushion of hair in the middle ear around the round wind. Natural resonance of external ear and middle ear due to the inherent anatomic and physiological properties the external and the middle ear allow certain frequency of sound to pass more easily to the inner ear. The natural resonance of different structures, the external auditory canal, 30,000 hertz, tympanic membrane, 800 to 1,600 hertz, middle ear, 800 hertz, articular chain, 500 to 2,000 hertz. The greatest sensitivity of the sound transmission is between 500 to 3000 hertz and these are the frequency most important to the human in the day to day conversation. Attenuation reflex it is also called as tympanic reflex, acoustic reflex, protective reflex. It is a preventive reflex which reduces the sound pressure amplitude by affecting the mobility and transmission property of the auditory ossicles. Stimulus for the attenuation reflex is loud sound. Latent period is 40 to 80 milliseconds because the sudden key for extremely loud sound such as a bomb explosion or a gunshot is likely to cause the deafness because of the damage it can cause to the ear. There is a reflex activity. There are two muscles of the middle ear that is the tensor tympani muscle and stephedius muscle. So they contract reflexively in response to the intense sound.
the contraction of the tensor tympani muscle it pulls the malleolus inwards whereas the contraction of the stapedius muscle pulls the stapes outwards these two opposing forces it makes the ossicular system very rigid and therefore it fails to vibrate with the sound waves sound is not allowed to enter the inner ear sound intensity decreases by 30 to 40 decibels now what are the advantages of the attenuation reflex it prevents the occurrence of damage to the cochlea from the intense sound like that of a sound loud music or aircraft it also attenuates in mass all the low frequency environmental sound and allows the person to concentrate on the sound that is above the 1000 hertz where most of the prominent information in voice communi- communication is transmitted it talks just prior to vocalization and chewing which suggests that the middle ear muscles may act to reduce the intensity of the sounds produced by these activities transduction of sound waves transduction of the mechanical sound wave into electrical signal occurs in the organ of corti in the inner ear the steps involved in the process of transduction of the sound waves are the vibration of the basilar membrane stimulation of the hair cells outer and the inner hair cells membrane potential change in the hair cell neural transmission of the signals vibration of the basilar membrane sound waves from the middle ear are passed to the inner ear through the oval window here it is the oval window by in and out motion of the staples the vibration sound waves entering the inner ear from the oval window spread along the cala vestibuli here it is cala vestibuli as a traveling wave most of the sound energy is transferred directly from the scala vestibuli to the scala tympani very little sound wave that ever reaches the helicot at the apex of the cochlea as the sound energy passes from the scala vestibuli to the scala tympani it causes the basilar membrane here it is the basilar membrane also to vibrate it is important to note that the part of the cochlea where the height of pressure wave reaches its maximum varies with the frequency of the sound this is this will be uh, discussed in the traveling wave theory of von bekesi stimulation of hair cells the up and down movement of the basilar membrane in turn causes the organ of corti to vibrate up and down the tops of the hair cells in the organ of corti are held rigid by the reticular lamina and hair of the outer hair cells are embedded in the tectorial membrane because of the tectorial membrane and the basilar membranes are attached at different points of limbus 
as they slide past, past each other as they vibrate up and down. So moving to the shear forces set up by the relative displacement of the basilar membrane and the tectorial membrane, the stereocilia of the hassles bend back and forth. Stimulation of hassles. Here you can see when the organ of cautery moves up, the tectorial membrane slides forward relative to the basilar membrane. So bending the cilia cilia away from the limbs. When the organ of cauté moves down, the tectorial membrane slides backward relative to the basilar membrane and also bends the stereocilia towards the limbus. Bending of stereocilia stimulates the hair cells. Depolarization occurs when the stereocilia bend away from the limbus. Hyperpolarization occurs when the stereocilia bends towards the limbus. Membrane potential change in the hair cells. Bending of the stereocilia produces a change in the membrane potential of the hair cells, which is proportionate to the degree of the displacement, which is called as generator potential. The electrical activity of the inner ear can be discussed as the resting condition and during the stimulation of the ear. Under the resting condition, when the ear is not stimulated with the sound, two different potentials are recorded. One is endocochlear potential and second one is the resting potential of the acids. Endocochlear potential. The endolymph contains a high concentration of potassium and is electrically positive in comparison to the perilymph. 80 millivolt electrical potential which exists between the endolymph of the scala media and perilymph of scala vestibuli and scala tympani is called as the endolymphatic or endocochlear potential. The source of Endolymphatic potential is stria vascularis, which covers the lateral wall of the scala media. The characteristic feature of the cells of the stria vascularis, which contribute to the higher concentration of the potassium of the endolymph. The characteristic features are high concentration of sodium potassium ATPs and the presence of unique electrogenic potassium pump. The resting membrane potential of the hair cells. Each hair cell has a negative resting membrane potential. Therefore, the intracellular fluid is at the potential of minus 70 millivolt with respect to the perilymph of the scala tympani. At the upper end of the hair cell, the potential difference between the intracellular fluid and the endolymph is around minus 150 millivolt. That is minus 70 minus plus 80 is minus 150 millivolt. So there is not much difference between potassium concentration of the endolymph and the intracellular fluid. The large negative potential and the lack of potassium concentration difference between the outside and the inside of the 
hair cells makes these cells very sensitive therefore any slightest movement of the hair hair cells stimulates this stimulated let us discuss the potentials recorded from the ear on stimulation when the ear is stimulated by sound two types of potentials can be recorded one is cochlear microphonic potential another one is action potential in the auditory nerve cochlear microphonic potential when stimulated by the sound wave the changes in the membrane potential of the hair cells result from changes in the cation conductance at their apical ends the gating of the potassium channels is controlled by the bending of the stereocilia as when the stereocilia bends away from the limbus they cause potassium channels to open and potassium then flows into the cell and then the hair cell they depolarize when the stereocilia bend towards the limbus they cause the potassium channels to close and the hair cell deep in the hair cells hyper polarize the sum of receptor potential of a number of hair cells when recorded extracellularly is called as cochlear microphonic potential it is an oscillatory event that can be recorded by placing one electrode in the scala media and another electrode in the scala tympani cochlear microphonic potentials they are similar to the generator potential because they have no latency or refractory period they do not obey all or none law they are resistant to the ischemia and anesthesia the base of the cochlea responds to all frequencies of sound while the apex it responds to only low frequency of sound when the organ of corte is damaged by prolonged exposure to a loud tone the cochlear microphonic potential produced by this particular band of frequency is abolished the relationship between the intensity of sound and the cochlear microphonic potentials recorded through the basal turn and the third turn of the cochlea action potential in auditory nerve as the hair cell depolarize the calcium channels open calcium enters and release the synaptic transmitter glutamate and activates the receptor sites on the afferent neurons that causes action action potential loudness of the sound determines the frequency of the action potential genesis of the action potential in the afferent nerve fibers the stereocilium of the hair cells of organ of corti or linked to the side of the neighboring hair cell by a very fine process called tip link this is called as a tip link the arrangement is such that a tip link tie the tip of the stereocilium to the side of its higher neighboring one at the junction of the mechanosensitive cation channels are present at the higher process the events of genesis of action potentials are when shorter stereocilium or push towards the higher neighboring ones the channels get open up and potassium and the calcium influx happens and that causes the depolarization the molecular motors 
are mostly the myosin based they are present in the higher neighboring process next moves the channels towards the base and that way releasing tension in the here you can see tension in the tip ring this causes closure of the mechanosensitive cation channel and causes closure of and permits the restoration of the resting state the depolarization of the hair cells causes release of the neurotransmitter that is the glutamate which initiates depolarization of neighboring afferent neurons and causes the generation of the action potential the potassium that enters into the hair cells through the mechanosensitive channels is recycled it enters through the tight junctions into the neighboring supporting cells and reaches into the stria vascularis and again secreted back to the endolymph so this completes the cycle here you can see the sound waves representing alternating areas of high and low pressure condensation and rap action tympanic membrane vibrates in response to the sound wave vibrations are amplified across the ossicles the vibrations against the oval window set of the standing wave in the fluid of the vestibuli the pressure bends the membrane of the cochlear duct at a point of maximum vibration for a given frequency causing the hair cells in the basilar membrane to vibrate neural transmission of signals which comes from the transduction of sound waves in the hair cells they are transmitted through a complex auditory pathway to start with the auditory nerve reaches the spiral ganglia which is the first order neuron and then to the cochlear nuclei ventral and dorsal and then to the superior olivary nuclei trapezoid body nuclei and then lateral lemniscus and then to the inferior colliculus and then to the medial geniculate body and finally through the auditory radiations it reaches the auditory cortex the auditory uh, auditory broadman's area areas are 41 42 22 21 and 20 to remember easily the auditory pathway remember as e coli ma e stands for eighth cranial nerve and then the cochlear nuclei o stands for olivary nuclei superior olivary nuclei and then the lateral lemniscus and then i stands for inferior colliculus m stands for medial geniculate body and a stands for the auditory cortex neural processing of the auditory information involves encoding of frequency which is a pitch determination encoding of the intensity which is the determination of the loudness feature detection and localization of sound in the space encoding of the frequency human auditory mechanism has a remarkable power to discriminate between the sounds in the range between 60 to 20000 hz cochlear nerve fibers encode frequency of sound stimulus so that there is a duplex theory which includes both the place theory and the frequency theory which is required to explain the frequency coding of the sound 
place theory by Herman. Basilar membrane was constructed of segments that resonated in different frequencies. These segments were arranged according to location along the length of the basilar membrane. Sound entering the cochlea causes the vibration of the segments that are tuned to that frequency, to that particular frequency that contains. So it is similar to the tuning of the guitar strings. So adjusting the tension on it. It is similar to the guitar. Place theory, this theory can explain the discrimination between the sound frequency above the 2000 hertz and up to the 20,000 hertz. The silent features of this theory are the basilar membrane is a mechanical analyzer of source frequency. The basic pattern of the movement of the basilar membrane is that of a traveling wave. The high frequency sound waves produce waves of maximum height near the oval window, whereas low frequency sounds produces waves of maximum height near the electroma. So correspondingly, the basilar membrane near the oval window vibrates in response to the high frequency sound. As the distance of the basilar membrane from the oval window increases, there is a gradual decrease in the frequency of the sounds to which the membrane responds. Near the helicotrema, the basilar membrane responds to a very low frequency sound. The basilar membrane is narrowest and stiffest the base of the cochlea near the oval and round window and most complaint at the apex so that is near the helicotrema so near the oval window the vibration vibrates most of the higher frequency and it is very stiff so here vibrates to middle frequency, intermediate frequencies and finally at the end of the helicotrema it vibrates most to the lower frequencies and it is less stiffer. Frequency theory or it is also called as Wally principle. It discriminates the low frequency sound below the 2000 hertz for every very low frequency of sound there is a synchronization between frequency of sound and the rate of discharge through cochlear nerve this is called as the poly principle of frequency discrimination the importance of this Wally principle is limited. The frequency of action potential in a given auditory nerve fiber determines principally the loudness rather than the pitch of a sound. Pitch of sound, as we have already discussed earlier, pitch is a subjective sensation produced by the frequency of sound. Higher the frequency, greater is the pitch. Discrimination of pitch depends on two important factors. One is the loudness of sound and another one is the duration of sound. It also affects the pitch to a minor degree. Encoding of intensity, that is the loudness occurs at the level of cochlear nerve fibers by the following three mechanisms so increase in frequency of firing of an auditory nerve fiber 
with the increase in the intensity of sound wave the amplitude of vibration of the basilar membrane also increases which in turn increases the frequency of firing in an auditory nerve fiber the second one is increase in number of nerve fiber stimulation as the amplitude of the vibration increases large portion of the basilar membrane is vibrated and thus more and more hair cells are stimulated this in turn increases the number of auditory nerve fibers which are activated and finally the third one stimulation of the inner hair cells so certain hair cells are not stimulated unless the sound is very loud stimulation of these cells therefore causes the nerve system that is the intensity of the sound is very very high feature detection higher auditory centers respond to particular features of sound stimuli for example the cortical neurons may respond specifically to a shift from high to low frequency nodes which is why of the auditory cortex may not impair the ability to discriminate the frequency so instead the lesions of the auditory cortex may cause loss of ability to recognize the pattern the sequence of the sound localization of sound in space a human can distinguish sounds originating from the from the sources separated as little less even by 1 degree so there are receptive fields which is a feature of the most auditory neurons so above the level of the cochlear nuclei so they contribute to sound localization the auditory system uses the some of the clues to judge the origin of the sound so the time lag between the entry of sound in two years right the difference in intensity that reaches the two years this is how they localize the sound summary sound waves in the external environment so reaches the ear drum that is the tympanic membrane and then the auditory ossicles and convert it into the movements of foot of plate of stapes and they set up waves in the fluid of the inner ear that act on the organ of cauda inside it and uh, that generates the action potential in the auditory nerve the auditory nerve through the auditory pathway to ecolima it reaches the auditory cortex sound waves as vibration enters the external ear and reaches the middle ear where the amplification of the sound waves happen and through the ear ossicles it reaches the inner ear where there is fluid and there happens the action potential and uh, through the auditory nerve it reaches the auditory cortex where we hear the sound movement of fluid in the cochlea happens the vibration of the basilar membrane occurs receptor as cells bend there will be influx of potassium ions into the receptor hair cells receptor hair cells voltage becomes positive depolarizes so there will be increased action potentials generated in the auditory nerve action potentials so relate to the brain and finally the hearing occurs books to read hindu purana gaitan and hall gelong and gk pa thank you
போல் சொன்னீங்க